What's up guys, it's Shrek, and this is the Nerf Modulus Regulator. Now I have a dedicated video coming out as to whether or not this blaster is worth the money that you spend on it. And I think that the answer is yes, but a lot of the hardcore modding community thinks no. And I'm aiming to bring it up to speed and up to snuff. Now there are only so many of these and they all were debuted in Canada. So a lot of people are actually afraid to modify these because it does have a built-in board and that board controls the, the firing mechanism. So people don't want to burn out their board, they don't want to burn out the LED up here and because of that they're they're very worried about ruining their $50 toy. $50 is a ton of money, so if you're going to buy this but keep it stock, that doesn't necessarily make a ton of sense to me. So I will be the change that I want to see out there, and I'm willing to risk my regulator to find out if we can't uh, make it better. So that's kind of always been what I've wanted to do with all of these blasters, is make them as good as they possibly can be. It appears that there are no hidden screws in the battery port, which we will be gutting, and then it looks like there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 screws that you have to remove, two right here that are going to have to come off for this to butterfly, and then if you move the selector switch away and back into its semi uh, position, you'll find that there actually is a hidden 21st screw. So let's go ahead and crack this. Alright, so with all of the screws out of the regulator, we can start to butterfly it. Butterflying, of course, being the process of turning it into two uh, symmetrical shells that kind of splay out from one another. Now, not all shells come apart easily or evenly. Sometimes you have to use wedges to kind of tease different bits up in. This up here wanted to stick. This back here wants to kind of stick. It looks like the handle is all one piece more or less and now we have hit our first barrier. So you will see that the battery tray is directly connected to the entire internal gut system here. So in order to do anything we're going to have to cut off the battery tray. Now that's not an issue because we were going to cut the battery tray off anyway. So this is our anode and then our cathode, I'm just using the wire strippers on needle nose pliers, and this side is free. So now, we can really take a look at these internals. This is of course the board, although we can't really see it right now as it's facing inwards. These up here are the IR beams that allow you to see darts, and then that all leads to this LED up here, and then we've got the trigger down here, which is both a rev trigger, and then this one appears to be, huh its switch is not actually behind this trigger. So this is an entirely mechanical mechanism here and the piece that's electronically switching this is just connected here. So this only works this way because it mechanically toggles the same piece here that twitches this switch down here. So the selector switch is down here both physically and electronically and I'm going to have to keep going through the layers to get the flywheel cage out. I'm going to be very careful to take good care of these IR sensors and I absolutely have to make sure that everything on the board stays more or less where it is as we start isolating uh, both power supplies and other bits. So this switch here doesn't need to come out because they're just attached by pressure and then all of these seven screws inside are going to come out and this whole assembly should pop out of the system. Now we're still attached to this light up here which I would like to preserve and this switch down here. The only other thing that we're still connected to is the selector switch so we are in fact going to have to remove not only this piece but also these two screws down here, which are the electronic portion of the selector switch. And once all of that is said and done, we should be able to get the entire circuit portion of the blaster out of the main shell. And it should start becoming much easier to figure out how it works, like almost puzzle style. True to form, this is just a three position switch, so that's semi, burst, and full. And it's just actuated by this mechanism, which turns on a dial. The clicky nature of it comes from the piece in here that kind of retains it. Now, our board is right here. 
and this is the circuitry itself. Now, there looks like there's a lot going on here, but it should handle the voltage from a 2S swimmingly. We don't want to interact with a lot of the IR beams, and I don't really want to replace this pusher, but I do want to isolate the power that goes all the way to the motors. So this is a much more familiar sight for us as nerfers. This is two candid motors. It's almost identical to the hyperfire and everything on this board can go completely. This right here, I am not sure what it is. And then this in here seems to be part of the counter mechanism. And we've just got a lot of work to do in here electronically to make sure that we're getting the right power to these without frying the board unnecessarily. Let's go. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to remove this. This is a very familiar magazine lock, both electronic and physical. We're going to completely scrap that and we're going to peel this out and we will splice it so that it's always open. That is just going to get rid of that small feature. And this switch, I am technically unsure what it goes to at this time, but once we've got all of these switches away and we can play with them, we will know exactly what everything does. We can figure out what we need to keep and what we don't need to keep. This is still just our light up here, and a lot of this stuff can go, but some of it's gonna need to stay. As we pull this out and flip it over, our flywheel cage starts to make a whole lot more sense. And we can see that this is our leads to the motors to power them. It appears that this one here is going to be the anion and then this one will be the cation. Now that's going to be easy to flip polarity wise because we will be replacing these motors anyway for better performance and faster spin up times. Let's go. Alrighty guys, so at this point we have isolated the stock motors off of the regulator. They have leads coming off of them, so that was pretty easy to determine how we were going to build a better regulator heart, a beating kind of core that would actually throw the darts using LiPo power. Now, since we don't really have any alternative flywheel cages with this being a brand new blaster, we're doing it old school, which means we gutted this off, we killed the board and the motors, and now we've put in Michel 2.0 motors. These are motors, of course, optimized for 2S performance, and now I'm coming in and I'm attaching the stock flywheels back on just enough to get them onto those motor pinions and you can see this has got that funky thing that the hyperfire had going on where the cage is really built of different levels which is a very strange design choice in my opinion but I guess the cheapest way for the manufacturers that Hasbro chose to uh, build an angled flywheel cage. Now that's kind of funky because right now it's being a pain on camera, but should be able to slip that back in. And there we go. So once these are snapped into place, everything sits flush like so. Now, I guess in theory it would make sense to attach the flywheels in a different order, but I really, see, ah, such a pain. I really wanted to make sure that I had my wires the right spacing before I did anything else. So. I'm kind of fiddling with it, but then we will almost. If you have small or uh, weaker hands, you might need a tool. I've heard a lot of talk about finding ways to, to set flywheels on and get them off more importantly that uh, it might be useful if you've ever had trouble with it in the past. I don't know how that's going to come about, but there's talk that it will be a 3D printed part that will be available. So this is looking good and stable. Again, a lot of people don't believe in the candid flywheel cage, but in this case, it is what you get. So to test that, that seems good. That seems good. So this piece here is of course going to go inside. Now, uh, for lack of a better term, I've removed the rubberized dart gate from inside. It just slows things down and gums things up. It does have two posts on this side and they're aligned with the, uh, the cage itself so that you know it really only goes in one way. That goes in like that. This piece is going to fit over the top and then again, multi-layered assembly. This is snapped together and ready to go. Now just for the purposes of testing, I'm going to make sure that our polarity is good and if it isn't good, then I can go ahead and reverse the wires coming off of these leads. I do these leads this way instead of connecting the wires directly for two reasons. One, it's uh, electrically more efficient and two it, it makes it easier to course correct and replace things if you ever have to so we're gonna go ahead and attach black to black red to red and see if that is the direction that we wanted to go And it 
it is not. So that was just a reversal, which means that we can switch those leads, no muss, no fuss, no problems. I don't normally test with a 2S LiPo, but it was what I could reach on camera quickly. So as far as the board goes, I've started shorting out some of the locks and I'm trying to be very delicate to maintain the integrity of not only its built-in resistance so that maybe it can handle this 2S LiPo, but also these uh, infrared pieces seem kind of delicate, kind of important. So this is going to get back installed. I think that we're going to have to connect these leads to here and we should be getting much, much closer to where we want to be. We will replace that wiring though. Let's go. Alrighty guys, so I want to maintain using this motor. These pusher motors have always been pretty good to me in the past, but I do not want it to have this board on it. So the first step is that I'm going to remove these leads. I'm going to keep in mind that the white goes to this far lead and the green goes to the nearer lead. Then I'm going to remove the board itself. Now it is hot, you can do this uh, different ways and I'll probably get pliers in here pretty soon. But I'm trying to remove ever so gently this from the motors leads and then now this board is completely gone we can come in with our solder and we can reattach them so it's very very easy I did snip this grounding wire off before I even started and that was attached there I might even snip that bit off I can't remove the soldered bit but I can make it less pokey which is always nice. Now, I am doing this with this still attached because again, I don't want to fool with uh, redoing the entirety of the circuit. So, this is going to go here. I'm going to go ahead and retin this wire. Some people use third hands for this. I just Spider-Man my hands instead. Now, normally I do this in a much different way and I peel the wire through, but this wire is actually pretty decent and it seemed like it would serve these purposes just fine. So, we are not replacing these wires and I think that we're going to get adequate results, especially since, as far as I know, I am the first person to modify this blaster. So, right now we are just searching for uh, success, not necessarily optimal success. We just want it to work. Proof of concept is the goal here. That looks good. Alrighty guys, so it does not look any different from the outside, which is totally fine. The 2S LiPo that is powering this bad boy is locked and loaded. We'll start off in select fire just to show that the spin up time is a little bit faster there and that the performance is going to be a little bit snappier. So. That's not bad at all. Like, maybe there is something to this canted flywheel cage nonsense. Hard to say. So now we've got, whoops, uh, so we can take two single fire shots and then we'll switch to three round burst. And then now three rounds. That's interesting how it knocked both off. So let's go ahead and drop that, tease that into place, throw this one in and we'll do some three round burst here. And the thing that I'm most excited about is just that the, well, I guess these are 10 mags. The, uh, the response out of this is just much faster. It, it responds and spins up and actually like does what it's supposed to do in a much quicker fashion. The LED indicator uh, I think still works. It was still working when I was testing in the workshop. Let's find out here. So this is full auto for our final firing test. And you can see that the rate of fire is significantly improved. And hey, look at that. The LED does still work. So that's my modification guide for the modulus regulator. It's a sweet blaster. You really, really, really have to know what you're doing to take it apart and put it back together again. Uh, there's not much more for me to say about it. 
than that. I mean, it is a complicated piece of machinery, but while I don't think that it's anywhere near as nice as the Echelon, it is pretty nice. Like, it is a very cool select fire system. It's certainly worth putting the effort in, and it's not uh, that bad. I really enjoyed getting to work with it, and I think that it's going to be fun to take it out to an SCNC war now that it does actual work. Let's uh, end the video there, but thank you guys very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed End Wars coming up very, very soon. I hope to see many, many of my fans in Ohio for what should be the premier nerf event of the year. See you later.